Hey guys, it's getting really close to my last frost date. And so what I'm talking about today is creating a medicine for all of your entire vegetable garden and your other plants too, if you want to. But this is specifically for diseases that are going to crop up through the months of summer. It will work. It's great. I've tried it year after year and it always works. Basically all these ingredients, many of you will have it in your kitchen. A little bit of alteration with one of them in particular, but I'll explain why I changed that one specifically because of some possible negative ingredients in, in it. But anyways, let's get started and I'll show you exactly how to put this together. So this disease fighting tonic only has four main ingredients. One is going to be one gallon of warm water. You're going to need some vegetable oil, some chamomile tea, and some liquid dish soap. Now, as I was saying earlier, what I've done is, is I've searched out what I think is one of the safest liquid dish soaps. I used to use the Dawn that had the blue food coloring in it and I noticed some squash I had planted actually had a little bit of a blue tinge inside the squash when I cut it open so I didn't want to use that anymore and I switched to baby shampoo which can be a little bit more expensive the Johnson's baby in America is one of the well, best well-known brands and it's probably the safest especially if you can put it on a baby but I recently found this Dawn and it does not have the blue dye in it it's a little bit harder to find because it just came out and I'm not sure how long it'll stay on the shelves so if you can find it, that's great. Then you don't have to worry about the blue dye, but it's one of the safest liquid dish soaps you can find compared to some of the others that have harsher, stronger chemicals in it. Then you also need a small bucket to mix all the materials up in. And specifically, you're going to need a small spray container. This one's made by Solo. I've used it. I have two or three of these around the greenhouse and I really like it. So I'll put a link to one of these down below. But the solo sprayer is great. It's just one of those things that I couldn't live without in the vegetable garden. Now, as far as the diseases I have, I live in zone 7A in the deep south, and we have tremendous humidity in the summertime. So once the weather gets above 75, that's when these diseases will often come in and start plaguing all sorts of vegetables. So what I would recommend is you do this before you get to your warm weather, probably April and the beginning of May, and then periodically do it about once every two weeks. But you want to get a head start on it and do it at the first part of spring when the weather's warmed up just a little bit but before 75 degrees Fahrenheit sets in. Now one thing I would absolutely recommend doing is doing a small test area on a plant. You don't want to spray your entire vegetable garden with this once it starts coming out and you end up destroying a huge part of it especially on some plants that could be sensitive to it. So just remember make sure you do a small test area and I would recommend you do this either late evening or extremely early in the morning before the sun comes out which could cause some issues. So Probably, most likely, I would do it probably late afternoon after the sun has went over the horizon, but before dark. So before I mix everything up, I quickly want to talk about what the four things that are most often going to damage your plants. Now, the first is fungus, and that can be made up of mold and mildews. And so that can be dormant in the soil until the weather warms up and we start getting some warm summer or excuse me, warm spring rains and that activates it and it starts off as spores and spreads across your entire vegetable garden. So doing something like this can really help you prevent an outbreak of disease in your garden, especially if you're in a high humidity area, as I mentioned earlier about my area, zone 7A. Now the next thing I'm going to talk about is bacteria and bacteria are even smaller than fungi and they can quickly spread through the garden. They're always everywhere. Bacteria is in our bodies, in the soil. And once they make their way to the plant, it can be detrimental. Now, a lot of bacteria are basically harmless. And if you live in a cold winter area, then this may not be as big of a problem to you. But if the winters don't get cold enough, the bacteria can survive throughout the winter. And sometimes they actually survive through surviving through insects. And then the following spring, those, those insects come back and they transfer that bacteria back to the plant. So this formula will help with that as well. Now the next thing that can be a problem is viruses in the garden and many of them are, are harmless and won't affect your garden but there's a few that can attack vegetable plants and tomato plants and if you see curling of the leaves there could be a virus involved so again this formula will help with that. Now aphids can bring a virus in so I would recommend taking a look at this video that I made about controlling aphids and other small insects in the garden. I'll put a link to that up above as well. Now the last of the four things that this formula is good for is nematodes and nematodes have a short short pointed end it looks they look a little bit like a worm or a snake and they can sometimes get into the leaves and the stems of the plants burrow their way in and drink out some of the juices of the plant and the problem with this even though not all nematodes are bad the ones that are bad can do that and it opens up a doorway for bacteria and other problems to come in viruses and that can destroy your plants so 
Again, this formula will work for those as well. All right, so I'm going to show you how to mix it up, and it's very simple. I took some warm water from inside the house, and we're going to mix it in our bucket. It's just a little bit easier to mix in a bucket. So let me get this poured up quickly here. All right, and what I'm using is a stir stick, and these are really cheap, and I often use them in the garden. Also, for plant labels, you can print on this with a permanent marker and it'll last forever, but this is basically just a paint stick. So I recommend this highly in the garden. You can get these really cheap and sometimes you get them for free if you're buying paint and you can ask for some extras and it'll, they'll last for quite a while in your garden as compared to the little plastic labels, which can often break and you get, they get lost up under your plants foliage. So these st stand out quite a bit more. So after spending about 30 minutes searching, I realized there was a key ingredient that I had left out of the initial ingredient lineup but it's peppermint essential oil. And this is really important to remember this as well. It's only a small amount that you're gonna mix in there, but it's really important that we don't forget this because it's a key ingredient in this disease tonic. All right, I'm gonna start with the peppermint oil. And so this is a half teaspoon and we're gonna fill this up. It's gonna take a couple of our droppers right here. And man, this formula really smells good when you do that. It makes you think of the holidays and a beautiful candy cane. But anyways, we're going to use half a teaspoon into the warm water and let it drip off there because it's a little bit sticky. All right. The next thing we're going to use is our just common vegetable oil, same amount, half a teaspoon. I'll try not to make too big of a mess with this. Okay. Same thing. Just let it drip off the spoon because it does tend to stick to it there. We'll make sure you get because it's half a teaspoon is not that much compared to a gallon size container so we want to make sure you get as much of this every drop into our mixture now next we want to mix this up before we add in our final soap product now this is only going to take a small amount as well but it's twice as much as one teaspoon. So I'm going to take two of these, half teaspoon, half teaspoon. And so that is our complete mixture. All right. We're going to mix that up carefully. If I can put this top back on there, so I don't want to spill this. And again, if you can't, if you can't find this particular one, it's Dawn. And I think it just came out. I'd never seen it before. I purchased it. It's called Dawn Free and Clear, and it doesn't have the dyes and some of the other ingredients. So I think it's even better than the standard Dawn, which is something I've always used. Again, I wouldn't use a lot of it. I, I'm only using a very small amount in this mixture, but I wouldn't put large, large amounts into the garden. Again, like I said earlier, I did actually see some of the blue dye ending up in some squash that I'd grown because I'd over applied it in the garden on another formula I've got. So we're just going to carefully mix this. And the last ingredient is going to be our chamomile tea. Through the magic of editing, I'm going to need to steep this for about 15 to 20 minutes to make sure. I'm not going to add the powder from the chamomile tea. I'm going to let it steep and then add one cup of chamomile tea once I have finished steeping. Okay, so the magic of editing, I've allowed 15 minutes to pass and just kind of kept steeping this over and over to make sure I get as much of the chamomile tea into the water. It's one cup of water and I'm going to add that to our one gallon. And I'm going to carefully stir this as well. I suppose you could put the entire bag in there, but this is the problem is these small sprayers get clogged really easy. And so even though this is a fine powder, I think that it might clog the system. So that's why I'm only just pouring the steeped chamomile tea into our mixture. So I don't have to worry about clogging and I don't have to worry about rinsing out the sprayer. But I really like these. Again, I'll put a link. I, I think I've got three of these in the greenhouse. So they've lasted for quite a while and they work great. Okay, so after a few minutes of mixing, I'm ready to put this into our sprayer. And I'm going to try to do this without making a giant mess. I don't have my large funnel handy, so I'm just going to pour this slowly. Now, I think this mixture would probably last maybe three to four weeks before it starts to lose its potency. So I wouldn't store it for a long time. I would just mix up fresh batches as you, as you need it. And I'm probably going to make a big mess because of this wide... really hard to do and I don't know what happened to my funnel but I'm sure after I shoot the video it'll be sitting right in front of my face 
anyways, if you like the smell of peppermint, this is really great. And so we're going to charge our sprayer. And I've got some tomato plants I started and been growing in the greenhouse throughout the winter. I found them as seedlings growing at the base of other tomato plants, so I'm not exactly sure what varieties they're going to be, but I'm going to put them back into the garden and just kind of experiment with those. But I like knowing exactly what type of tomato I'm planting. But in this case, these are a little bit more of a question because they were probably cross-pollinated with the other tomatoes. I had lots of varieties of tomatoes, so I never know exactly what I'm going to get when I take seedlings from last year's garden and replant them into this year's garden. Okay, so this is part of my collection of tomatoes that I pulled out of the garden from last year, and I've been able to get them to survive through the winter in the greenhouse, and I'm just going to give it a light misting. And if you've already planted your tomatoes and they're in the ground, then you're going to want to spray about a 6 to 12 inch barrier around the base of the soil to to take care of some of the issues, the four main problems I talked about earlier. But you just also want to give it a spray where you have some runoff. As you can see, I actually have some, I believe, white fly in here. So this is going to help with that as well. And just give it a good soaking so you do have some running off. And that's going to make a huge difference if you can cut those problems off early in the year. Again, you want to do this before the 75 degree weather comes in. You want to do it in late spring but before we get those warmer humid days and you can cut this uh, problem off before it begins but again just give it a very nice spraying and not only and i should say this as well this is not only for tomato plants this is for all varieties cucumbers squashes but again if you've never used this before and you don't know about the particular variety you have just do a small test spray and see what happens and make sure, give it about two or three days and make sure you don't have any type of reaction to your formula. So guys, I hope you'll try this because it works great on tomatoes as well as all the others I've mentioned. And you can try it and make sure that it doesn't affect your vegetables in a negative way. And once you've passed that three or four day period, you can go on and do the entire garden with it. You don't have to use a small sprayer like this. If you have a large, like I have a backpack battery powered sprayer where I can douse the entire garden in a matter of minutes and I don't have to go from plant to plant pumping and spraying. So it's a lot easier when you have one of those. Uh, I'll put a link to that backpack sprayer because it really does make a huge difference. You just want to make sure that you don't use it for anything but organic products that you're putting together yourself and you're not using any kind of pesticides or chemicals in it so you don't have cross contamination there. So guys, I've still got a few weeks to go before I hit that last frost date, and I'm really looking forward to doing, to doing some new stuff in the garden and trying some new seeds, new vegetables. Probably, I'll probably overdo it this year as I do every year, and I end up with so many vegetables that I'm having to give them away. And unfortunately, some of them I'm even have to toss into the compost bin, but they, at least they get some use. So guys, I really appreciate you watching. If there's something I left out or something you want to add, please leave a comment down below, and have a great day.